Our scripture this morning comes from the book of Genesis, chapter 32, verses 22 through 31. I invite you to follow along in the Pew Bibles or follow along on the screen. The same night he got up and took his two wives, his two maids, and his eleven children and crossed the fjord of Jabbok. He took them and sent them across the stream, and likewise everything that he had. Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him until daybreak. When the man saw that he did not prevail against Jacob, he struck him on the hip socket, and Jacob's hip was put out of joint as he wrestled with him. Then he said, let me go for the day is breaking. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. So he said to him, what is your name? And he said, Jacob. Then the man said, you will no longer be called Jacob, but Israel, for you have striven with God and with humans and have prevailed. Then Jacob asked him, please tell me your name. But he said, why is it that you ask my name? And there he blessed him. So Jacob called the place Peniel, saying, For I have seen the God face to face, yet my life is preserved. The sun rose upon him as he passed Penuel, limping because of his hip. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. This morning we hear a very similar story to the one that we heard a few weeks ago. We may remember that story as known as Jacob's Ladder, with a story where we get that Jacob is all by himself and he has a dream of a ladder coming down from heaven to earth and the angels ascend and descend upon it. Our scripture this morning is very similar to that. We have a same experience, a night encounter with some divine being. Yet when we look at our text this morning, we see that there are differences between the two stories. Sure, we, as I said, each story lets us know that Jacob has an encounter with the divine. But the first story does not change Jacob. After he witnesses the angels ascending and descending from heaven, he gets up the next morning and he is the same person. He has the same name. He is still known as a trickster. He is still known as one who supplants. But this morning's text is different. Jacob walks away from this encounter with the divine, not only marked by his experience, he walks away with a new name. He walks away with a new identity. This experience with the divine changes him. It transforms him. This is a new beginning for the one who is to become the father of a great nation. He is no longer known as Jacob. Now he is Israel. Now he is known as the one who has striven with God, who has striven with humanity and prevailed. Now he is known as the one who has seen God face to face and survived. The interesting thing about this text is that nowhere are we told that God wrestles with Jacob. We assume that to be the case based on Jacob's new name, but we aren't told this definitely. Yet somehow in reading this text, we know that that person is God. We know that it was God who met Jacob on that night and wrestled with him. We know that it was God who struggled with Jacob as a testament of wills. We assume that it is God that Jacob encountered on that night all those years ago. Maybe we do assume that because, like Jacob, we too have found ourselves in struggles with the divine in our midst. Maybe we were in the same situation. Maybe in our lives and in our faith, we too have struggled with the holy. We have often wrestled with the divine mystery that surrounds us. At some point, we have looked for answers to things that we don't understand, and we have gone to God, and we have struggled. Maybe in our lives, maybe in our faith, maybe at the same thing, at the same time, we have wrestled with the holy. 
And maybe nothing about that encounter specifically tells us that it was God, but we knew in that moment it was God. We knew in that moment we had encountered the presence of God in our midst. We knew it in our souls. We knew it in our bodies. We knew it in our hearts that we were engaging, that we were encountering something so much bigger than ourselves. We may not have been able to put it into words, but we knew in that moment when we were struggling, we knew we were struggling with the holy mystery in our midst. And for me, that is what I appreciate the most about this text, is that it picks up on this disorienting, this life-giving feeling that we often find ourselves in as people of faith. I also appreciate that we're not given a description of that man. We're not told anything except that, Jesus, that Jacob wrestled with a man. We're not told that this man was an old man with a long beard sitting in a throne high above the heavens. We're not told that this man had blonde hair and blue eyes standing at the door ready to knock, holding a lantern. You know, like that picture we often see in the churches. We're not told much about this man and our imagination can fill in the gaps. But I like to say, yes, I know that it says he wrestled with a man, but I think in my humble opinion... That it's the author using limited language, trying to describe what he knows to describe and capture the mysterious. But that's another sermon for another day. For the author and for us as people of faith, what matters is that we see, we hear, we understand that there's an invitation for us as people of faith to engage, to wrestle, to encounter the holy in our midst. This author reminds us that our God is not distant, that our God cares about us, that our God cares about what happens to us. This author reminds us that our God sees us, that our God hears us. Us, that our God meets us where we are. This author reminds us that our God is okay with us bringing everything we are to our God. The good, the bad, the ugly, and the breathtakingly beautiful. That our God is okay with us coming with all our emotions, all of our frustrations, all of our joys, all of our fears, all of our everything to God. Because our God is big enough to handle it all. Now here's a word of warning though, I think our text gives us, as that's the right language for today. The author reminds us that we as people of faith, that we as humans, as we as the ones who are called to be in relationship with God, we cannot be so arrogant to think. That when we struggle with God, when we engage the holy in our midst, when we encounter the divine mystery in our midst, we cannot be so arrogant to think that that encounter will not change us or mark us in some sort of way. These encounters with the holy do and will mark us. They change us and transform us. We are no longer that same person we were before we had that encounter. And we cannot go back to that person, nor do we want to go back to who we were before we encountered the holy, the divine in our midst. Our encounters with the divine change us and they transform us. These experiences where we encounter, where we wrestle, where we engage, where we lift up and engage the divine in our midst, they open our eyes, they open our hearts, they open our minds, they open our very beings to a new way of being in community with each other, a new way of being in relationship with each other. It gives us a new narrative to share and to talk, a narrative where peace and justice and grace shape our decisions and actions. Our encounters with the divine give us a new identity. They give us a new name, a name which fulfills the promises of God. Our encounters with the holy are new beginnings for us. They are a way for us to become the people that God created and called us to be. 
beloved children of God, loved more than we can ever imagine, and strengthened each and every day by the divine in our midst. For me, that's why it matters that this story was in our sacred text. It reminds me, it reminds us again and again and again that our story, the story, is not finished yet. That I am, that we are not finished. Jacob's encounter reminds me, reminds us that we are in the process of becoming and through it all, our God is there meeting us where we are, inviting us, encouraging us, inviting us to engage and wrestle with the divine in our midst. This story reminds me, it reminds us that as beloved children, we are invited to be a part of something so much bigger than ourselves. That we are invited to embrace the gift of love, God's love, which will not let us go. God's love, which continues to bless us. God's love that reminds us time and time again that no matter what happens in our life, we as people of faith, we are ones who have striven with God. We have striven with humanity and we have prevailed. It reminds us that we have encountered God face to face and our lives were no only preserved, they were saved. They were saved by the love and grace of God. Jacob's story reminds us that we as people of faith are called to be in an authentic relationship with our God. Our God who is steadfast and faithful. Our God who loves us more than we will ever know. Our God who meets us where we are and challenges us to become the person that God created us to be. The wonderful gift of Jacob's story is that it reminds us day in and day out that our lives were not only preserved, they were saved by our God who was anything but ordinary. Amen.